and today we're going to discuss concerns surrounding the eVTOL aircraft. This is one of the main points that the bears have against us and are saying is the reason why eVTOLs do not have airworthiness. So let's jump right into it, see if there's any substance to their claims and see what solutions the eVTOL companies can use to avoid these dangers. So let's jump straight into it. Before we jump into the video, a lot of you aren't subscribed. So subscribe now. Now let's get into it. There's no other way to do this other than tackling it straight on. So let's start with crash worthiness. Definitely the biggest danger surrounding the EV tolls. As we said before, there is zero margin for error with these EV tolls. One crash will probably take down most of the industry. It will definitely take down the company that it's happened to and the margin for error is zero. That is why you see Joby and Ehang carrying out so many safety tests to make sure that they get the test certificate. And the FAA will not let them pass unless they are airworthy. Let's jump into it. So traditional helicopters have been around for ages, but eVTOLs with the electric propulsion and unique configurations present new challenges in crash scenarios. However, this is where innovation shines. Let's talk about battery safety. So the lithium ion batteries are at the heart of the eVTOL propulsion system, but they can be volatile. They can have thermal runaway where one cell failure leads to a chain reaction. And this is a real concern. Yet the response has been robust. Engineers have developed advanced battery management systems that monitor each cell individually. These systems can detect the temperature spikes or voltage anomalies, isolate problematic cells and even manage thermal events before they escalate into fires or explosions. This is very similar to what Vertiv do, which if you haven't seen it, is one of the companies that we have listed on our road to glory. And at the moment it is performing pretty well. There is also research into alternative chemistries like solid state batteries, which promise higher energy density with less risk of fire. Another problem that could occur is redundancy and failures. I know a lot of the bears say, but what about if there's a problem with one of the propellers? Well, don't worry, we've got you sorted. The distributed electric propulsion is the game changer here. Instead of one large engine, we have multiple smaller ones. If one fails, the others can compensate, maintaining control and lift. This redundancy is like having a safety net in the sky. Flight control systems are also being designed with fail safes, where the vehicle can automatically adjust power distribution to keep flying even with rotor failure. Another problem many bears have been saying is that there's no pilots or passengers that have training for eVTOLs. But that is the same as when you start driving your car and you are unable to drive it until you get lessons. There will be training programs for pilots and include both simulation and real world flying, focusing on eVTOL specific scenarios like vertical operations and automated system interaction. For the passengers, safety briefings are being developed for those on commercial flights, teaching emergency evacuations, seatbelt usage and behavior during flight will be included. Another concern that has been raised with eVTOLs is the noise and community acceptance. While eVTOLs are significantly quieter than helicopters, noise remains a major concern especially in the urban environments that they will be used in. Engineers are innovating the blade design and flight path algorithms to reduce the noise. Some designs incorporate variable pitch propellers that adjust dynamically to minimize sound. There is also community engagement where the flight paths are planned with public input to avoid noise sensitive areas, ensuring these vehicles are welcomed rather than shunned by the community. And now we've got the certification and regulation and the regulatory landscape that are they are trying to navigate through at the moment. Agencies like the FAA and the EASA are in dialogue with manufacturers to craft standards that are both stringent and practical. This involves comprehensive testing for crash worthiness, environmental impacts, and operational safety. We're seeing the emergence of new airworthiness categories tailored to eVTOLs, ensuring they meet safety benchmarks before entering commercial service. The best way to avoid these concerns is through experience in the market and that's something that both Joby and Archer have been doing expertly. They've been partnering up with veterans in the game that will have great links and experience in these markets. So if you want to find out who are Joby and Archer partnered up with, make sure you give this video a watch. As for me, I'll see you next time.